Hey, what's up? This is Comlux, and welcome to another video. Um, so, there's just so much I want to say right now. Just with the whole, since DevStream 98, just with the huge, huge update coming from uh, DE for Warframe and the Plains of Eidolon, I have to say that this is kind of funny because it's the timing is just, I would say, a little too right, well in place. I'm not insinuating anything, but I have to say, as a huge, <laughs> huge Monster Hunter fan, and uh, since I, I've been playing the series since... Uh, 2004 since its inception i i have to say with with monster hunter world a few months away uh early quarter one of 2018 being released i just have to say that i i swear um the plains of eidolon is literally like a respectful homage to that game like i i just can't believe with all the updates and all the new features coming and mechanics i don't know i'm just like so overjoyed and since the plains of eidolon can be accessed so early in the game apparently stated by DE Steve, the player can be only like what four nodes in in the beginning of the game on Earth, and you'll have access to it. And what's really important about that is that having access so early as a new player will definitely change, I think, the uh, overall outlook on the game. Just because in previous versions of the game, or early versions of the game, that you didn't have this, you know, it kind of felt like a lobby shooter, you know, you didn't have this open world, I guess, emulated open world kind of segment, you know, and that's really gonna change the mental approach of what new players think, you know, this game would be. So with that being said, here are my 10 huge f reasons to play the Plains of Eidolon update. So if you don't have an account yet, just go make one. It takes like a minute. Get all your friends to play. Hell, even if your grandparents aren't doing anything, make them go play it. It is free. Number one, Twitch drops. So in the stream, Rebecca stated that there would be a new Twitch incentive coming to all viewers and streamers, apparently. Um, I don't know about you, but I love free stuff. DE, just from time and time again, just loves to give out free things to their players. Um, I don't know, I can't complain about that. Um, so apparently, um, there are a few new things, or a few new incentives that are coming. So uh, one would be to link your account, and then upon doing that, you will receive the free, exclusive Broca Prime sign, Donna. Uh, which is really cool. So <laughs> it's a new Prime accessory, and you know what? It's free can't complain and it looks pretty freaking awesome too and it kind of has like a uh, white and purple uh kind of a uh, twitch theme going on for it which is really cool and there's several other incentives that are kind of presented here in like this graphic um you can earn twitch drops apparently which is uh Achieved by watching any Warframe streamer earn any in-game achievements. So if the, I'm guessing if that streamer earns an in-game achievement, that increases a random drop chance uh, in-game, ranging from cosmetics to prime gear apparently. So that is that's that's pretty ridiculous. So uh, for the fact that you can just increase your drop chance just by watching a uh, Twitch streamer. Um, watching for an hour gets you the exclusive Prominence Wisp Totem, which is pretty amazing. Um, I'm a sucker for anything cosmetic, so uh, anything to put in my orbiter um, is gladly welcomed. Uh, so what else? We have uh, watching partners or selected streamers uh, can get you uh, a sigil, the Terrorless sigil to be exact. And yeah, that's pretty amazing. Um, Twitch drops. Number two, focus rework. So to be honest, uh, playing for the game as, as long as I've had in and out, uh, I only know the focus system to be known as you farm affinity and you kind of use those uh, gain points uh, towards a specific uh, focus school. And uh, that's pretty much it and I kind of everything I gained I've kind of like just kind of randomly put into uh, 
uh, mostly Zeneric and Naramon, but I, other than that, I, I just really don't know the system that well, you know. I, I know that it's they're all passive abilities that you can select at one time and be activated, uh, I think, upon uh, pressing 5 as your operator. Um, but to be honest, I'm kind of... Actually, I am pretty excited about the focus rework because um, I'm kind of ready to start over because I think their hopefully their approach would be a like a simple uh, rehaul of of the mechanic, uh, just because I, I think it's a little bit too uh, just there's there's just a lot to work with with the, with the focus system, but uh, so I'm really excited about this because. All the accumulated focus will be refunded, so I'm ready to start over for that. Um, I'm really excited about the warrior mode, which is apparently, you know, instead of just pressing or holding five, I think, to eject out of your warframe, um, it's not just going to be using the four basic, I guess, um, default abilities that you kind of unlock through from War Within. Um, it's going to be more combat orientated, and I am ready to use my operator. Number three, new Warframe. So apparently in the Planes of Island update, we're going to be getting a new Warframe, along with a new quest that she's going to be shipped with, and she's a glass-themed Warframe. I'm just super excited because this Warframe seems to be a hybrid between a few different Warframes. Uh, not to spoil so much, if you haven't seen what this Warframe can do yet, um, you, sh you should just go check out the stream, Devstream 98, and uh, yeah, it's just really crazy. One of her abilities is literally a cross between Frost and, uh, and, and Nova, and it's just crazy. I, I can't just, I can't imagine all the CC or uh, crowd controlling that this uh, Warframe can do, and it seems really powerful. I hope they won't nerf her too much, so yeah, I'm really excited. Class Warframe. Number four. New Mag Deluxe skin. So as a Oberon main, uh, mostly, um, I haven't played Mag too much, but this skin looks really, really, really attractive. I kind of think that's kind of like the cousin to the Trinity Striga skin, just because um, the magnetic headdress that's kind of uh, been conceptualized onto the skin kind of like hangs around and floats. Uh, similar to Trinity's kind of like very ornate oriental type of uh, headdress. It's very pretty. But anyway, um, I, I kind of like how those two are kind of similar, but it's really awesome. I like how Mag's joints are kind of basically magnetized through uh, energy, which is really cool. But the selling point for me is I have to say, I, may, I might be a bit biased, but I'm a huge fan of Tonfas, and just because the way they look, how heavy they look, how they kind of like mount and stance, how they kind of like caress uh, the Warframe's uh, elbow silhouette. Um, it just looks really nice. I want it. Take my money, DE. Just take my plot, please. Number five, Hawk's Anvil. So ever since Tenocon and since the announcement of custom weapons being crafted, yeah, custom weapons, what can I say? I think ever since the dev stream, the segment was called Hawk's Anvil. It just seemed like it's just called Hawk now, I guess. But yeah, the custom weapon consists of three main parts, which is a blade, a handle type, and a weight type. Uh, before, it was kind of mistaken that it kind of looked like some kind of Sugatra type of attachment, but the weight type will affect some kind of unknown stat for now. But yeah, crafting weapons in Warframe. Number six, new syndicate. So along with the Plains of Ilon, we have a new syndicate, which is Cetus, which comprises of the inhabitants of Cetus, which are the Ostrons. Uh, so in addition to making custom weapons from Hawk, um, in order to get the custom parts or to unlock the blueprints for them, uh, you have to do odd jobs, I guess, around town and out in the plains to gain these standing points with them. Number seven, job board. 
So just like Monster Hunter, uh, in order to post a quest or a mission, we have a guild posting or guild kind of uh, board. And this is pretty much Warframe's uh, version of it. So basically there are uh, things to do for the denizens of Cetus and they kind of need stuff done. And for that, you will be giving uh, rewards, credits, relics and probably resources from the Plains of Eidolon. So I think this is really cool because in the beginning of the game there would be more than one way to explore the Plains of Eidolon and this should be like a really good incentive for beginners looking to stock up on relics, credits, and uh, just resources from the Plains. But also this is a great alternative to the way we've been used to playing Warframe, which is just selecting a mission or a certain mission type. Uh, but yeah, this is a really good alternative way. Number seven, mining. What's really interesting about this segment is that with the new mechanics of mining, um, it's not as simple as just taking a pickaxe and hacking away at, you know, granite or whatever and, you know, gaining ore. It's actually really uh, kind of interesting actually because the mechanic introduced for mining is uh, it presents itself as kind of like almost like solving like a cipher or, or like a security lock of some sort but there would be a pattern that you would have to follow using your uh, newly introduced uh, focused amp kind of gun and uh, if you haven't seen before, if you have been following the tweets, D.E. Steve uh, stated in one of his tweets that, uh, that the amp gun will be kind of used kind of like a cutter or like a plasma cutter from Dead Space. And basically, you follow the cutter in the presented pattern and basically you motion the amp gun uh, according to the pattern if you get it right you extract the ore. Yeah, it's really interesting. And with the ore mined, uh, that ore can actually be used to craft uh, a whole new set of arcanes that will be shipping with the Plains of Eidolon. Exclusively new set of uh, arcanes, and that's really cool, and I wonder what they're going to be. So yeah, new arcanes, new mining system. Awesome. Number nine, huge Eidolon fights. So just like Monster Hunter, um, usually when you're fighting a a boss it usually takes between uh, 10 to 15 minutes but what's really interesting with the Eidolons awakened at night is that uh, you can't just simply kill the Eidolon uh, as it is you would have to use the new I would say warrior uh, mechanic that's been introduced and uh, yeah it, it's just going to be one huge uh, like Monster Hunter-esque kind of fight and uh, yeah, I can't wait for that just because um, this whole new boss dynamic is being introduced and uh, it's, it's almost having like two games in one. Number 10, Operator Armor and Operator Warrior Mode. So last but not least, I have to say this is what kind of ties it all together um, for me. With it being said, being able to craft operator armor and having your operator in a different combat mode it will just be so so different from what you're used to just having because you know backtracking to it the only reasons why we had the operator in the first place was well actually now mainly was to farm for kuva and then have an alternative way to kill sentience yeah, so that being said, with only a guess of maybe till the end of this month, maybe next month when the planes of Eidolon ships, there's still plenty of time to sign up for Monster Hunter World. I mean, War Warframe. Okay, bye.